Today you're going to join me and Paul um, eating uh, our new favorite. It's um, Kim. What do you call it? Bim bum bak. Bim bim bap. Bim bim bap. The Korean uh, um, bowl. Bowl, uh, but yes. we do it uh, Lina style. Lina style bim bam bop. <laughs> and. The thing is that I bought tuna fish the other day in the store. A whole tuna fish. Instead um, of fishing. Instead of fishing because it's so hard to get that fish. So uh, I was planning to do sushi the first night because I was really uh, longing for sushi. But when I come ho came home I didn't have any um, wasabi, I didn't have any sushi rice. But then I was thinking, mmm, bim bum bap. That was a long time ago. Bim bim bap. That was a long time ago. Let's do that. So now we're going to boil the rice in our tryckkare with beans. Yeah. And uh, here in our fridge I have tuna filet Whoop. that we're going to chop. And we have some yeah, and we have some uh, peppers, cucumber, salad, ginger, and to, we have so little of our favorite chorizo sauce left. So today we bought two different because we don't know if they are good. First I start with some cabbage. I think that is good for your stomach and I think it's tasty. Normally I use carrots as well, but we are out of carrots. Then it's a rule on Svea. Man tager vad man haver. It's a Swedish uh, Kajsa Varje trick. Kajsa Varje was a uh, chef. Yes, it is. It's, they said it was going to blow like 40 knots today. Yeah. And you should see the palm trees. It was like not like those ones. It was like they were standing like <laughs> to the right when. Yeah, they are like umbrellas when it yeah. gets too windy. It's like just there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I take some teriyaki as well because I really love that. Do you want me to give it a try? Probably mm -hmm. And it's uh, so nice to eat with the chopsticks. I like that. But it looks funny because you're eating like a Stonehenge man. I want to try this one. <laughs> this was what this was was strong. Point of view, Shiratsa should have some. It should be like a bit chunky. Oh, now you're wondering what I'm doing, but I like to mix the rice with the salad and the tuna. Yeah, I think that's the most. It's so nice. Deep in the pot. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So it's a bowl with rice and. Mm. So we're having a, um, a mukbang. <laughs> Do you know what mukbang is? That's uh, eating and uh, just making film at the same time, talking about mm -hmm. different stuff. Yeah. It's all new to us and it's probably all new to you as well. Uh, so let's see what 
will happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do a lot of new stuff. All the time we do new stuff. Mm -hmm. Because it's nice to learn. Yeah. But it feels like you're a constant beginner. <laughs> and when you compare to other, you always find something, someone that knows the stuff, which is nice. But also that you're like, <laughs> oh, I have to learn this. So this is for you. So you learn something with the mukbang. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know what it's done for. It, it, it's eating. It, yeah, it's the abbreviation of eating. Eating together with the with the with and the, filming at the, the same time. With the camera. Time. Yeah. It's it's just you and me on the camera. <laughs> yes. Um, and we, you guys watching. Mm -hmm. Which is your favorite part in the in the mix? The tuna, of course. Or the rice. The rice. <laughs> <laughs> Remember on our first travel together, it's like seven years from now, we did that? Years ago, you say. Mm -hmm. um, we went to Cap Verde. We, were, we had the, as a goal to learn to kite. Mm. And every morning we had a beautiful breakfast, mm. and we had like tuna, raw tuna, tuna carpaccio t as a um, as breakfast every morning. It was yeah, really nice with champagne. With champagne. <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah. Not to Sal where we were. We're going to Mindelo. Yeah. M Mindelo, I think they say. Mindaloo, I think. Mindaloo. Mindaloo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to Mindaloo. <laughs> <laughs> it takes five, five... I'm really glad that I, I can entertain you <laughs> with, <laughs> with the uh, capital of uh, Cape Verde. <laughs> you go crazy. Yeah. I'm easy to entertain. Yeah. Mm. Oh, mention it. <laughs> Just ma tell me more capital cities. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you don't have the uh, sauce, it's like it's boring. Boring. Yeah, you need the hot sauce and the tuna and the ginger. And then the, the cabbage make the um, crispiness. I like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Combined with the tuna, that is. Mm -hmm. It's good that the diving today went well. Mm. Mm. I was diving one, one meter deep. <laughs> we just had 50 bar in the tube. No. <laughs> we had to change the anode on the propeller, the anode. Is it's it? the uh, it's metal part that sort of fades away uh, to avoid uh, these electric currents, so it doesn't. It looks like this. Look like this when it's old. <laughs> yeah, so it's supposed to break down. Yeah. And I didn't know what propeller we had, so I had to dive down and get it loose, then go to the shop in a wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> but they had it, yeah. one piece. We should have more. But that's been on the boat for since we bought it. Mm -hmm. It probably was new when we bought it. Yeah. But then it's been in the water since then. And mostly in the harbors. People say it's like it's a bigger problem in harbor. I'm not sure. I think mm. it's just to blame. It's the second time I've dived until I was totally, the bottle was totally empty. Mm -hmm. And it's good to know because it's like when you have five breaths to go, mm -hmm. it's like you get asthma. Mm -hmm. <sighs> And then you hold your breath, and then you go, and then you realize, ah, oh, this will be really hard to get some more air into it. Mm -hmm. 
but since I was just underneath the boat, it didn't matter. No. You can eat, actually wear a snorkel and doing that, I think. Nice. It was extreme. Yeah. And also, I, <laughs> I checked the boat for... Because we had, the water line was really green. Yeah. And we brushed it, and it, it was stuck to the hull. Mm -hmm. But we got that away. Mm -hmm. uh, but underneath, it was very good. And I, I just scrubbed it a little bit, very gentle, to avoid to get all the paint away, because yeah. we have this anti-folding. It's so interesting. We are in Las Palmas now, mm -hmm. um, together with all the other working explorer. Yeah. Twenty other boats in the same on the same pontoon, and even though, I mean, we all have sailed from different part of the world, so you sail for half a year or so. I mean, five months minimum yeah and we all feel like beginners feel like beginners mm, yes and and it's so obvious that we can't take our own decisions because <laughs> if someone does anything all the others what are you doing and then <laughs> like checking the rig today someone started to check the rig and that's a good thing we we made it uh, in Lagos? Yeah, like six weeks ago and it looked good. Mm. But you need, it started with that one boat changed their insurance and the insurance company, insurance company said that oh, you have to do a proper check of the boat, like a yeah, proper check. Uh, but you can't do it yourself, uh, so it has to be this authorized person. Mm. And, and that person got up in the rig and, and we were looking, oh, are they checking the rig? And within hours, people <laughs> were up in the ma mast and checking, checking the rig. Yeah, they've sailed for a year or so and now it's like, yeah, it's... <laughs> And, and the first thing I said to Paul, we had to go up in the rig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we are, yeah. before we're crossing. Yeah, we are. But I think it's more for getting a new line to, uh, we have to hoist up. the flag for a uh, Viking explorer. Yeah, but I also want to check. Yeah, it's good to check. Of course it's good to check. But it's very hard to check them out. You check the the wire and the attached uh, where it's mm. yeah the thing that goes around the wire and yeah look for cracks but I think if you check the cracks it's like way too late if you see that if you <laughs> yeah then you have to like weld it or yeah it's really hard yeah but if it's cracks in the mast I mean, maybe you should uh, 30 no, 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 now, now, before, in the, the middle of the ocean. Also want to, because we have, I don't know why this is, we haven't changed the tension on the mast. It, it has a little curve, and I don't know the reason for that. I want a straight mast, because you have, you have the furling uh, main that mm. uh, rolls into the mast. And if it's bent, it's like, it starts on the top and the bottom, and then it gets... I think it's better to have it straight. And also, because the the forestay is a little bit too loose, it doesn't matter when we go across the Atlantic, because we go with the wind. Yeah. Uh, but when we uh, go against the wind, you want good tension on the, the forestay. And you do that, uh, I mean, you can pull the, the back stay, but then you bend the mast even more, so you yeah. get, so uh, I'm going, what I want to do is to make it straighter, yeah. but I think it's quite hard work, but it's worth it. Yeah, it had to be strong. Then three months, we didn't mm. do anything on the boat. No, we were just sailing, mm. fishing. 
And now we have done quite a lot in the past two months. Mm -hmm. And it's more like, well, we just want to do it. Yes. So it's so good now, that, it, yeah, sorry. And now we decided, for example, to, to put on more sun, what is it called? Solar panels. Solar panels. Hmm. That's probably the biggest. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. We and have it's 500 watts now, and then we add another 200. That's on the other. Yeah. Like knowledge. Yes. Uh, one minute you you have the feeling that you don't have any knowledge because something happens and you don't know where to start to fix it, or like with the waves or the tide or the how to get into the marina or there are so many things something happens with the boat that you have to repair uh, yeah and do these crossings that when you go more than 25 or 24 hours mm. a lot of new stuff and then suddenly you're there and you're prepared to take the next step yes and like it's a, like you involve with with it, and you, you yeah you get the experience and you feel safe and it's okay. But on the other hand, it's like oh how can I do this? And mm. even though you 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 learn th things that you thought you already knew because I was just yeah tightening up the spring on the boat the other day and Stefan, our neighbor, he was looking at me like, ah, don't do that. You're doing it the wrong way. No, he's, he didn't say that. He was, he's so humble. Mm -hmm. uh, he was like, can I give you a good ad advice? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, of course, if you think it makes me better, hit me. And he he showed me how to make the knot on the cleat in another way that I you know. did. Yeah. And it was not no big change, but it was better. And that's quite cool that you you learn things that you thought you knew. Yes. And that's that's fantastic. Not yeah. uh, not only new things, it's like with the currents or how to catch it. I, I think if you just give a, a, a learn something new every day on the boat, yeah, and something new about the country, something new about what's the difference between propane and butane? Butane. I think uh, bu propane is better in colder condition than butane. Yeah. Or something like that. Mm. Would you say we probably we have because we have a lot of time? I don't think we have a lot of time. Do you think so? But you fill the time with things. People always uh, wondering what are you doing on when you're not yeah. working. But my day is I wake up and I have a full schedule day. Yeah, it is interesting because the the proof of that is that. When we had an ordinary week at home, we, yes. we watched some TV series on Netflix or HBO.